So I was saying we, we came down to St Ives in 1973 and uh, you don't think things are going to change but it, it changed me, it changed how I, how I looked at things. It was only just a simple holiday with a few mates away from my family. It was that feeling of independence, looking after yourself. I went back home, um, I jacked my job. My mum went apeshit. She lost the plot. Jesus. So, and maybe a week or two later, I didn't know what I was doing, where I was going. I was just in this fairy dairy land. And, um, but that don't pay the bills. So I, I got a job on a road gang, um, making a new road, which didn't go down too well. I lasted about half a day. Um, and then over a period of time, bumming about, not having any money, I, uh, I got a job at the pit. Started the pit the 5th of November 1973. And the tales there, well, that's for another time. So uh, I'm down here the first time with five of my mates. All young kids, all 18 or thereabouts. Don't know shit from play when you're 18, do you? Anyway, first time away from family for a holiday, for me anyway. We came down here and we slept on the beach, the beach over there, which is <coughs> Porthminster Beach. Slept in the beach huts, which is those coloured buildings to the left. They were canvas tents then, they're like little structures now. So one, one time we're down here and we're walking along the seafront uh, on the promenade, if you can call it a promenade. And this lad just came up to me randomly and asked me if I wanted to buy this little air pistol. And because uh, I'd always been interested in air guns and all that type of stuff. So I ended up with a greater price and I bought it off him. And um, a little, little sort of German a German brake barrel air pistol. So we went to a, a local fishing shop and I, I bought a, a tin of pellets. And my mates thought I was crazy. So I, on holiday, instead of spending it on beer, I, I bought a, a little air pistol. So we're, we're back on the beach, back on Portminster Beach. And the, my mates, they're like big kids wanting to have a go with this air pistol. And I showed them how to go on because none of them, none of them have got any idea with these things. So I showed them how to load it, brought the barrel, put a pellet in, shoot it up. But no, I just did it because that's part of the tail. <clears throat> I just put my finger in front like that. Anyway, a lad called Mick Trower. We called him Trousers. I haven't seen him in years. It's his, he's really keen to have a go. And this other lad, Keith Nichols, yeah, I showed him how to shoot. So he, uh, this is no word of a lie, this is absolutely how it was. So I gave him this pistol and he broke, I said, break the barrel, put a pellet in. And as he shut the barrel, he put his finger over the end of the barrel. And I don't know where he did it, but it went off and it shot him in the end of the finger, okay? <laughs> He's screaming like a banshee running around the beach with his pistol, effing and jeffing, holding his finger in this pistol, with Mick Trower, trousers, running round behind him, say, give it, give it it here, give it it here, you've had your go. No, not the slightest interest that he shot himself in the end of his finger. So, that was 50 years ago. Was the finger intact? Oh yeah, the finger was intact, but he had a black nail. <laughs> But did we laugh? I think we already wet ourselves laughing at him running around screaming. It was like some of the cartoon character with a big bulbous finger on the end. Yeah, there we go. That'll do for now. So I'm here another time. I think it was 74. We're over that, over there, just by the lifeboat station. There's a pub called the Lifeboat. So I'm outside there, I've had half a skin full of beer. 
leaning against the rails and I'm just watching people going by and um, I just happened to be looking in there's a look a little side street that came down and this little girl came around the corner the absolute spitting image of my little sister Yvonne she'd only be three four I thought bloody hell my sister's got a double it was like something like surreal I thought, what and then my little brother Yvonne's twin came around the sick corner uh, Russell I thought what my brother and sister came around the corner and then my mom came around the corner and she sort of just her eyes focused straight on me Bear in mind, I hadn't got a clue they were coming. No, nobody said nothing. Just, there's my two little brother and sister. Then my mum, she came straight over to me and she said, Sam, come and sort this tent out. Your dad's useless, he can't put the tent together. Like, she, she'd just been to the shop and coming back around the corner. They'd just come down to Cornwall to find me. To... <laughs> How does that work? <laughs> what? So did you sort the tent out? I, I sorted the tent out, but it was the fact that she'd just come round the corner, never, oh, we found you, so pleased. We've been looking all over. It was just, get your ass into gear, come and fix the tent. <laughs> <laughs> Dear me.